the opposite signs okay so they are basically like n12 n13 n23 three components of the angular momentum this angular momentum i am referring to the field angular momentum of the field okay and lorentz boost operators okay where time is involved one one time like so <coughs> what we have in this four dimensional field theories that we we consider in the minkowski space uh, we have four conjugate quantities field energy field momentum we have six conjugate quantities three components of angular momentum three components of lorentz boost operators and you can you can actually derive all these equations uh, we, we we ignore it for the time being because we have limited amount of time to we have to go all the way so uh, but but we are, they give give us the physical insight what kind of things we can calculate in a theory and why should we calculate them why should we know them because they are observable quantities all these quantities are observable quantities that we are in addition to these 10 quantities from this uh, resulting from the space time translation and six of them these result from the uh, space uh, rotation in space time they, these six result from the rotation space time rotation they result from the space time translation symmetry and the space time translation or symmetry space time rotation and the on the top of it is the charge of it. okay so, uh, for a Dirac spinner theory, the charge operator is measurable in the laboratory, right? Electron charge and its uh, opposite uh, charge opposite. Right? The same but opposite signal. So, uh, this is a short, short, in my, in my theory lectures, I, I spent a couple of lectures on this to the right thing out. And so, then I derived them for the grand theory. But let me just mention that we can do this. And... <coughs> And we can go further. So, uh, one more point I could I could make very simple illustration that if I, if I define phi equal to phi one plus phi phi two divided by square root of two and phi theta equal to phi one minus i by 2 divided by square root of 2 then i could express the lagrangian d nu phi dagger d nu phi minus m square phi dagger phi i could express this equivalently as summation over j by half d nu phi j d nu phi j minus one half and what I want to say here is that like I made for specific positions for phi and phi dagger I could now I would make one for phi one and one for phi two so uh, constant times a one uh, a one um, a1 plus a1 dagger and phi2 would be And in, in fact, you could establish a connection between the A here. Here we had a uh, A, A dagger, B, and B dagger. And now you have here A1, A1 dagger, and A2, A2 dagger. And you can just simply read out the, the connection uh, of this A with this, and this A dagger with this, B with this, and B dagger with this. You can establish a connection. So, uh, uh, what I personally uh, learned, uh, uh, I, I suppose I can erase this all. 
Okay. I am just mentioning some of these things. My aim is to make uh, the subject, the topic of our main topic of our consideration, and the superstring theory and the string theory as simple as possible. So, for example, for bosonic string theory, uh, you, 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 you describe the by a polyacoup action and I will go into the details later, okay? I, I just mentioned it. And in the conformal gauge, I can write it as d2 sigma. And this is so uh, this is the conformally. Give fixed polyacoup action. And from here, the, the, the equation of motion that you that follows is x mu equals to zero. Delambertian of x mu equals to zero. I could write this delambertian either in as it suits me, the, the light front. Uh, coordinates are usually better to work for this, so one can one can one can write this as equals to zero, and this is so uh, I I have uh. I, I'll just do it a little bit in more detail. But the main point is, this is what, so you see in, in what is happening in bosonic string theory. You have these fields, mu, mu goes from, uh, it's not going up to 3 here, it's going up to 26, 25. 25. So, bosonic string theory is 26 dimensional. And so this mu, has value 0, 1, 2 up to 25 or plus minus and then 2, 3 up to 25. Okay. So, what is this? And there is no term corresponding to the mass of x mu. So, what is actually there that this x mu is a massless scalar field on the world sheet, but it is a vector field on the target space or in the space time manifold. So, but because this x mu or tau and sigma. So and as I said that I could I could I could uh, uh, consider uh, this is a this is baby question and I could consider x mu as a sum of the waves that move to the left and the waves that move to the right. Okay. So let me just before I write this, let me just introduce the, the light front coordinates in a little bit more than you would know it better. That's fine. So, here you see in the bosonic string theory, we have the fields F mu uh, tau and sigma. I could write it also as X mu sigma alpha. So, I have a sigma alpha vector. This, uh, this has component sigma 0, sigma 1 or as tau and tau and sigma okay or <coughs> i could i could also write sigma alpha as sigma plus sigma minus okay so if i if i work in that 
light from the coordinates, then I could split sigma alpha as sigma plus sigma minus. Here I could write it as sigma 0, sigma 1, and I can relate these two. Okay. And similarly, my x mu, if I like, I can write x0, x1, and xi. Here i goes from 2 to 3 up to 25. In super string theory, we will see that that theory is only 10 dimensional. Okay. And <coughs> so here also, if I like, I could write x plus, x minus, x i, and this i would then go from 2 to 25, and these two components. So you could, if, if you like, you could, uh, you could, you could correlate. Uh, you could correlate this uh, these coordinates the square root of two, and similarly here. I could introduce uh, sigma plus minus at 